In this video, I will be explaining you about regulation of glycolysis and gluconeogenesis simultaneously. Because you know glycolysis is a uh, uh, glycolysis and gluconeogenesis, these are opposing pathways. Glycolysis is a breakdown of glucose and gluconeogenesis is the making of glucose. So that means when the glycolysis is going on, gluconeogenesis has to be halted or when gluconeogenesis is going on, glycolysis has to be halted. So that makes sense here. Okay. So let me explain you how exactly these two opposing pathways are regulated. Okay. So the regulatory molecule on these two pathway you need to remember is fructose 26 bisphosphate. Now the fructose 26 bisphosphate it will come from a bifunctional enzyme which has got two functional domains and that is PFK2 domain which is basically a kinase domain and we have fructose bisphosphatase domain basically that's a phosphatase domain. This is a bifunctional enzyme. I have made a video on this particular bifunctional enzyme specially concentrating on regulation of glycolysis and role of this particular enzyme on glycolysis regulation. You can watch a video which is in the link that is appearing in the right upper corner and also it is there down in the description. The link for that is available there. Okay. Now this bifunctional enzyme fructose PFK2 and fructose bisphosphatase subunits two domains which are present here kinase domain and phosphatase domain. So what that uh, what it does actually. So the whenever kinase is active so that means fructose 6-phosphate which is a glycolytic intermediate it will be converted into fructose 2,6-bisphosphate molecule. Now that means we need to know when you are going when our cells especially the hepatocytes where the gluconeogenesis is going on predominantly when this fructose 26 bisphosphate is elevated. For that we need to understand that uh, in which condition that we are talking about this. If the person is in well fed condition, so there will be increase in insulin. So let me write that, narrate that here. So in well fed condition, well fed state, so person has got insulin, so there will be increase in insulin levels and insulin will activate protein phosphatase enzyme and this protein phosphatase is going to remove phosphate from the surface of bifunctional enzyme. Whenever phosphate is taken out of the surface of bifunctional enzyme, so there will be change in the conformation because of this change in the conformation, so your phosphatase becomes inactive and basically the kinase subunit becomes active. In a bifunctional enzyme, when the phosphate is taken out of the surface by protein phosphatase mediated by insulin, your phosphatase subdomain becomes inactive and kinase domain becomes active. During this time what happens? A glycolytic intermediate fructose 6-phosphate, some of that will be converted into fructose 2,6-bisphosphate. So this fructose 26 bisphosphate concentration, it will be increased now in the presence of PFK2 kinase activity. So PFK2 kinase activity is increased because that is positive in the presence of insulin. So there will be more and more fructose 26 bisphosphate and that fructose 26 bisphosphate, it will have a positive effect on PFK1 enzyme. As you can see here, PFK1 that is phosphofructokinase 1 it is going to convert fructose 16 bisphosphate uh, fructose 6 phosphate into fructose 16 bisphosphate and that's a glycolytic main regulatory enzyme and that's active now in the presence of high levels of fructose 26 bisphosphate so it means glycolysis is kept active at the same time as i already told you gluconeogenesis has to be kept inactive who is going to do that it is the same molecule fructose 26 bisphosphate so whenever fructose 26 bisphosphate concentration is increased in the hepatocyte, it is not only keeping your PFK1 active, it is going to keep your fructose 16 bisphosphatase inactive. So as you can see, fructose 16 bisphosphatase, the role of that enzyme is, it is going to convert fructose 16 bisphosphate back into fructose 6 phosphate. So that's how it reverses glycolytic intermediate 
fructose and 6 bisphosphate into fructose 6 phosphate and this fructose 6 phosphate can be converted to glu glucose 6 phosphate and glucose 6 phosphate can be converted to glucose that's how you can make glucose in gluconeogenesis and this is the regulatory enzyme of gluconeogenesis one of the main regulatory enzyme in gluconeogenesis is fructose 1 6 bisphosphatase and this particular enzyme is negatively modulated by high concentration of fructose 2 6 bisphosphate which is synthesized by the kinase subunit of your bifunctional enzyme that is pfk2 kinase subunit so that happens when you have more insulin so that makes sense now so whenever person is in well fed condition if you have more insulin that means glycolysis has to go on at a higher rate so glycolysis is elevated and gluconeogenesis has to be halted because their person has already in a fed condition there is no need to make new glucose molecule you really need to break that glucose that's why high concentration of fructose 2 6 bisphosphate keep your fructose 1 6 bisphosphatase in active thereby gluconeogenesis is decreased so this is how insulin is going to control glycolysis and gluconeogenesis at the same time now let's move on to see in fasting condition what happens so under fasting state so you have glucagon released insulin decreases and glucagon is increased and that glucagon is going to elevate protein kinase a enzyme activity and this protein kinase a it is going to phosphorylate your bifunctional enzyme so when the bifunctional enzyme is phosphorylated so before that let me take out all these lines here so that they are not confusing to you and I will be explaining so now when the glucagon is increased so glucagon is activating protein kinase A enzyme and this protein kinase A is going to phosphorylate your bifunctional enzyme so if the enzyme is phosphorylated as we know phosphate has negative charge so there will be conformational change in an enzyme because of this conformational change your phosphatase now it becomes active previously the one it was inactive so now this becomes active phosphatase becomes active when the bifun bifunctional enzyme is phosphorylated and your kinase subunit now it becomes inactive so kinase is inactive now so phosphatase subunit becomes active and kinase subunit becomes inactive so when the kinase subunit is inactive it is no longer converting fructose 6 phosphate into fructose 2 6 bisphosphate now your phosphatase subunit is active so because of this what happens so whatever the fructose 2 6 bisphosphate that is present here it will be converted back into fructose 6 phosphate so fructose 2 6 bisphosphate will be converted back into fructose 6 phosphate by fructose bisphosphatase enzyme because this is a phosphatase enzyme so what it does it is going to take away phosphate present in the second carbon and release that phosphate as inorganic phosphate and the rest of the molecule will be released as fructose 6 phosphate so fructose 2 6 bisphosphate is converted into fructose 6 phosphate by fructose bisphosphatase that is phosphatase subunit of bifunctional enzyme okay so overall because of this what happens so there will be decrease in the concentration of fructose 2 6 bisphosphate levels in the liver so because your pfk2 kinase subunit is inactive here so you are no longer converting fructose 6 phosphate into fructose 2 6 bisphosphate with that itself there is decrease in the concentration of fructose 2 6 bisphosphate and also note that furthermore you are keeping phosphatase subunit active that, may that means it is going on consuming fructose 2 6 bisphosphate and releasing it as fructose 6 phosphate molecule so overall because of this there will be decrease in the concentration of fructose 2 6 bisphosphate because of this what happens its positive effect on pfk1 is now not there so whatever the positive effect that was there before now that is not there because of that pfk1 activity decreases and also previously what we have seen so fructose 2 6 bisphosphate when it was at high concentration so it was having a negative effect on fructose 1 6 bisphosphatase see in the previous previously before explaining glucagon 
I was saying in the under the influence of insulin, there was more fructose to six bisphosphate, and that was having positive effect on PFK1 and negative effect on fructose on six bisphosphatase. Now it is all reversed. So in under the influence of glucagon, you are phosphorylating by functional enzyme, keeping phosphatase active, kinase inactive, decreasing fructose to six bisphosphate concentration. When the concentration of this molecule decreases, its positive effect on PFK1 is now not there. That means PFK1 activity goes down and its negative effect on fructose on 6 bisphosphatase is also not there because there is decrease in fructose to 6 bisphosphate concentration. So the negative effect is not there. That means this particular enzyme activity goes up. That means it is going to convert more and more fructose on 6 bisphosphate back into fructose 6-phosphate and that fructose 6-phosphate can go into glucose 6-phosphate and then that can be converted to glucose. So like this, glucagon under fasting condition, it is going to decrease glycolysis and it is going to increase gluconeogenesis. So simply by decreasing the concentration of fructose 2,6-bisphosphate. So this is how insulin and glucagon, so they will act at PFK1 and fructose on 6 bisphosphatase accordingly and either increase the concentration of glucose or decrease the concentration of glucose depending on whether the person is in fasting condition and or person is in well-fed condition. So when the person is in well-fed condition, insulin is going to maintain high concentration of fructose 2 6 bisphosphate, keep glycolysis at a higher rate, gluconeogenesis at a lower rate. Whereas under fa fasting condition, glucagon maintains your bifunctional enzyme in phosphorylated state, keeping your phosphatase active, kinase inactive, thereby decrease the concentration of fructose to 6 bisphosphate, and that means PFK1 activity decreases, that means glycolysis decreases, and fructose on 6 bisphosphatase activity is increased, that means gluconeogenesis is increased. So, Concentration of fructose to 2,6-bisphosphate, simultaneously it has got an effect on glycolysis and gluconeogenesis. Whenever fructose to 2,6-bisphosphate is increased, that means glycolysis goes on at a higher rate, gluconeogenesis goes uh, down. And whenever there is decrease in the concentration of fructose to 2,6-bisphosphate, that means glycolysis goes down, gluconeogenesis reaction goes up. And this is how concentration of fructose to 6 bisphosphate regulates both glycolysis and gluconeogenesis. I hope this video has helped you in understanding main regulatory point about glycolysis and gluconeogenesis by a single molecule and that is fructose 2,6 bisphosphate. Thanks for watching.